Hello and welcome. Back in the 1930s, there was a comic strip created by Chester Good called Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy's long and legendary crime fighting career didn't begin here in Hollywood. It began in Chicago on the drawing board of newspaper cartoonist Chester Gould. He made Tracy a 20th century hero, defending American values and virtues in an urban jungle where good was good and evil was evil and nothing was in between. The help of forensic science and gadgets that he would have, like a smartwatch. Dick Tracy calling Hemlock Holmes, calling Hemlock Holmes. Go ahead, Tracy. The Abel Sable Fur Company has been robbed. Take the retouchables and get over there fast. It was a very popular comic and it took many, many, many forms in media. We've had TV shows about it as well as different variation of films. And today we're gonna focus on the one film in 1990 by Touchstone Pictures. Today we're talking about Dick Tracy. Crime is out of control. Vice runs wild. Gangsters have joined forces to squeeze the town dry, and only one cop is smart enough, honest enough, or tough enough to stop him. He's so good, Hollywood's decided to make a movie about him. Who is he? Who else? He's Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. Touchstone Pictures version was released in 1990, directed by Warren Beatty, produced by Warren Beatty, and stars Warren Beatty. And guess what? He plays the lead role, Dick Tracy. So you can see this was a very big passion project for him. But I was really surprised because we have a lot of people that are really known actors in this film, even just like scattered around. There is a huge cast list. Not only do you have Warren Beatty as the main role, but we also have Madonna who is also a really huge deal in this role. And of course this was 90, so Madonna was still huge. And then we also have Glenn Heady, who was the other main lead. Tess Trueheart, she played. Not only that, we have Paul Serino, we have Dustin Hoffman, we have Al Pacino and Kathy Bates. Dick Van Dyke is in this. Katherine O'Hara is in this. James Can, And a whole bunch of other people that are not as relevant now, but they were big back then. And it looked really, really cool when I was researching it and was realizing what this was about. I was really excited to watch it. I love the 30s, 40s, 50s, as we are all aware. And this is my entire aesthetic. So I thought it was really cool. And the idea of it is interesting. The aesthetic is really cool. And I like the color scheme and the set is really awesome. But after watching it, I was very disappointed by this film. You still have it very true to the comic strip. And I'm not familiar with it. So that's the first issue. I probably thought it was gonna be something a lot more exciting. I was very annoyed by Madonna's character and the way they cut everything together and edited it made it very off the wall and weird. They did stay true to the comic is what I've seen because it seems like even the comic everyone has these weird faces if they're a villain and you see that here because I didn't recognize anyone throughout the entire film. I knew that they were there, I had no idea who was who. <laughs> Every time some citizen buys a pound of hamburger, we get a nickel. Every time some guy gets a haircut, we get a dime. We'll dress like bankers. Join the Rotary Club. Together, we will own this town. When do we kill Dick Tracy? We have a solid story, and it makes sense, but it's more focused on family drama internally, as well as him fighting for off the gangsters. And Madonna was just a really huge problem in this film for me. It really turned me off. Madonna's a fantastic singer. Her music's great. But her character Breathless got so annoying so fast. And the way they edited everything together, they literally kept cutting back and forth between her song and them fighting six, seven times. Sooner or later you're gonna be... Faced it, I always get my man. Oh, come on, get over to 132 Broad Street. 132. 
You will be right, too bright, and it was overdone and basically she has no speaking lines in this movie at all it's all singing it's not a musical but it's all singing and the music which was by Danny Elfman and I adore Danny Elfman he's fantastic but it didn't match up to the idea of the storyline to me I felt that it was too ragtime poppy for me compared to gritty gangster action-packed film noir and the look of it is action-packed gritty colorful film noir but it still has the element there where you expect something and then you have these knockoff Broadway show tunes now, however, I own the view. What is fun? Why not two? And if you like two, you might as well a four. And if you like four, why not a few? Why not a slew more? And it just was very jarring. And it took me out of the element every time it happened. And it happened a lot. And this movie's not that long. This movie's only an hour and a half long. We also have the underlying story of this kid that was a thief and Dick Tracy takes him in to take care of him with his girlfriend, Tess Trueheart. Even though Tracy and the kids start out as enemies, they soon become friends and partners, saving each other from trouble that neither could ever face alone. He has to deal with his wanting to marry Tess, but also adopting this kid, and then also having an affair with Breathless, and then defeating the gangsters, and it's all over the place. It works, the story is totally fine, but everything together, it just kind of was too much and it took away from being simple. And the fact that Warren Beatty not only produced it, but directed it and stars in it shows that it was his vision and I really didn't like his vision. It was a nice try, it was interesting to watch, but I was very, I had high expectations for this film, honestly. The trailer made it look really cool and the promotional material made it look really cool and it wasn't. But that's okay. Tomorrow we're gonna take a look at a well-known classic, Raiders of the Lost Ark, so stay tuned and as always I hope you have a magical day and I will see you real soon.